a group of American expat expatriates working in um, South America are uh, surprised one day when their building is surrounded by metal walls and they can't escape. Uh, a voice comes on and tells them that they have a certain amount of time to kill a number of people or be killed themselves. Problems ensue and hilarity ensues. A bunch of people kill each other. Yeah. I, I dreamt the trailer for this movie. I, I got up right away and I ran to my computer and started writing. I knew that Sean Cunningham had dreamt the trailer for Friday the 13th. Right. And I was like, I, I dreamt the trailer. Yeah. Like I finally, after all these years, I dreamt the trailer. And also I was really excited to find out what happened because it set up this interesting premise and, and these characters and I wanted to see what happened. And so the only way I could find out is by writing it through. Well, my agent sent me the script and, uh, and I emailed back, I, I, it was like Malcolm Spurrier and James Gunn, like, oh my God, I love James Gunn's movies, and I read it straight away. Emailed my agent back and said, why are you wasting my time and sending me stuff that's never gonna get made? This movie's so smart and funny and violent and insane, no one in their right mind is gonna make this movie. And he said, no, no, they're making, they're making it, it's shooting in a couple of months. And I just said, whatever I gotta do to get onto this movie, just, just get me onto it. Um, and so I just went in, I, you know, we set up a meeting, I think we had a phone call first, we hadn't met before. And um, I just, you know, blabbed and blurted out how much I loved it and my thoughts about it and what I thought it could be. And, um, and I guess, you know, you, Peter and you kind of thought that what I was saying made sense and we just went yeah. from there. I mean, I, I thought what you were saying made sense. Also, I went back and watched your movies. And I, and, and I mean, I think that the thing was, uh, a lot of people had told me how good Wolf Creek was. Uh, but I felt like in seeing Wolf Creek, I just saw how you were able to work with actors in such a naturalistic way, which is something that most directors don't these days. They, they, it's all very delivered, and the characters in the movie needed to be very natural, and that was something that I thought Greg could accomplish, and he did. We had a quite a short pre-production period. James said, how about this person, and the, uh, how about this guy, how about this guy, how about this girl? The good part about that was they're all phenomenal actors. It's like, oh, what do you think of Michael Rooker? I'm like, he's, he's amazing, can we get him? I'll give him a call. So we're able to kind of put this incredible ensemble together, largely because James had this group of people who worked with for years who were lucky enough to get into the movie. So that was a really big advantage for the movie because it's, it's still a, it's a smaller kind of movie, but to have incredible actors in every single role, like we had like 20 main, actors we took down yeah. to Columbia to shoot the movie. Yeah, and it's truly like there's, in the movie you notice probably 40 people that have yeah. sort of specific moments in the movie. Right. So it's because it's about a you know group of 80 people in a building who are put into a position where they have to either kill each other or be killed. And that situation, you know, means that we didn't want to treat any of those people if they were cannon fodder. We didn't want the movie to be just you know, cartoons like in a lot of horror movies, we wanted them to be real people, which makes the movie all that more horrifying, really. Right. I just don't find any room in my head space for thinking my movies are superior or inferior to someone else. It seems like such a waste of, of my brain space to be thinking like that. I really just think about how can I make, you know, for instance right now, how can I make Guardians Volume 2 the greatest spectacle film of all time? That's all I care about. So that's what I, I concentrate on. I don't really think about Marvel versus DC. And also, you know, anytime a Marvel movie comes out that isn't as good as I wished it was, or anytime a DC movie comes out that isn't as good as I wished it was, I'm disappointed because I love these characters. I grew up reading Marvel and DC comics. I want them all to be good. And I also want them all to be good just for selfish purposes because when superhero movies are good, people go see other superhero movies. It's not like only Marvel or only DC can make money. If they both make great movies, they'll both help each other make money. Mm -hmm.